Recently, a new MACD indicator is making some noise on YouTube. This indicator is based on Dr. Elder work where he used it in his system which is called Impulse MACD system. The indicator is a little bit different than the regular MACD and of course after seeing those videos I thought I should test this the right way and not the crappy way. Now I've done a couple of videos on MACD and the most important one is the one in the Algo versus Crap series and you can watch that over here. So before we jump into the testing, let's see the regular MACD and how we can use it to build strategy. So this is the regular MACD indicator. You can see here I have the four hour time frame of the S&P 500 E-mini futures. And this is the MACD, which is based on two moving averages, the 12 and the 26. And basically the premise is when the crossover between the green line and the yellow line, which are the MACD and its signal. So when the crossover happens above zero line, then we go short. And when it happens below zero line, we go long. Of course, when the market is trending, then this works really nice. So for example, we look at this one here. This is the crossover happen above zero and then we ride this trend down until this part. And then for example, we take the last one here and it crosses below zero above and of course again it's working beautifully. But then when the market is sideways, then we whipsaw it. So for example, this cross didn't do anything, this cross didn't do anything, and this cross didn't do anything. And that's the problem of the regular MACD. And of course, it's the problem of all indicators that measure trend. So basically, when there is no trend, you get a lot of whipsaw. So here is the new MACD impulse. This is the one based on Dr. Elder work. And you can see I put 24 and 9 just to match the look of the regular MACD. Now, this is also using two moving averages, but it just calculated differently, and that's why I put uh, two different values to match. The reason I want to show you this, that although the behavior is very similar, like you can see the histogram and the crossovers, most of the time is very similar. What's different is here. You can see here we have a flat period. So while this one did a crossover, another cross and up, and another cross down, we almost got a flat period here and this continues. So for example, you have another one here. This is a flat period where this is crossing over twice. And then there is a long one here. This one is crossing up, goes below, goes up again. And all the meanwhile, we are flat here. So this is really a nice idea because instead of getting whipsaws where you go up and down and you don't make money because the market is going sideways, so with this indicator, we can see it's going flat, meaning we don't take any signal. But the most important part is, will this enhance our trading by using this indicator instead of the regular MACD? And of course, the only way to tell is through testing. And that's what I did. Now, in order to test this, I don't know PineScript, so I need to convert the PineScript into either SQX or TradeStation or Multichart. So I don't know Java, so SQX is out. Then I have only multi-chart, which is power language, and trade station, which is easy language. Both are the same. And in order to convert this, we need to see the code. So if you hover here, you can see source code. And if you click on it, this is the code for the indicator. So the first thing I did is I copied all this code and I pasted it in chat GBT and I asked it to convert this to easy language. So ChatGPT did its best and it gave me this. Now, this didn't work because, you know, there are some mistakes in the code, which is understandable. So I fixed everything, converted into a function and an indicator. So the function, I can use it in the strategy and I can use it to build the indicator. You can download the free code and the strategy in the free download section in StatOasis community. When I did the MACD testing in the Algo versus Crap series, I used just the crossover above and below zero. And I noticed in this new wave of videos about MACD, they are trying to find a level where this crossover happens. Of course, since most of these <laughs> videos are noobs, so they are trying to figure out with plotting a line and then of course manually trying to trade. And of course this doesn't work for us algo traders. So what the other video suggests is to pick a level, for example here, and then you pick these valleys to trade the crossover. And of course you can put another line here, let's say for example this one, 
and so we played only these peaks and that way we avoid these small signals which theoretically should not work because they are not significant now this will be extremely hard to do of course uh, you have to do it manually and then each instrument will have its own level for peak and valley so a lot easier way to do is through highest high and highest low so you take the macd and then you just go back let's say 100 bars 50 bars 40 bars whatever you like and say okay that's the highest high so if now macd make a crossover above that highest high then we take the signal if it's below the lowest low then we take signal a really simple but clever solution to use macd so now here is the macd impulse indicator with the highest high and the high and the lowest low so you can see these gray lines this is the highest high and this is the lowest low and of course when we make a crossover above this highest high then we take the signal and below this lowest low and also we take the signal okay so let's start our testing so this is the s p 500 es.d this is the daily bar daily session i have data here since 2007 so i did an optimization for the two moving averages and the highest high and lowest low look back period and the displacement and you can see we have uh, 43,000 iterations and if we filter for average trade greater than 100 so we have more than half about 60 percent profitable iterations so this is really good and expected of course i'm going long only because i'm using the s p 500 and it's a, an instrument that usually drift up all the time so basically we're waiting for a pullback and going long using this indicator so this performance is very close to the regular macd because in both cases we are waiting for a peak and a valley to take the crossover so we're already skipping all the whipsaws and this new indicator with the flat period in the middle actually doesn't perform here but the other strategy we can use to use this indicator is to wait for this flat period to happen and then take the breakout so the theory is if it's flat that means the market is going sideways and when it picks up momentum that means there is a breakout happening so i put the strategy in portfolio trader in multi charts and you can see i'm using the same one es.d in three strategies the number one strategy is the regular macd so this is zero is the regular and one is macd impulse using the same method which is the highest high and lowest low uh, crossover and then method two is waiting for this flat period and taking the breakout method and then i did the best value of each so i did the forty-three thousand iterations and this is the best values for the regular macd the impulse macd and the flat period and then breakout of the impulse macd the result of the portfolio is of course trading single contract each so three strategies uh, it's making two hundred thousand dollars with a maximum portfolio drawdown of fifteen thousand dollars and this is the most important part that i want to show you so if we go down to overview so the regular macd is making eighty four thousand, and if we look at this curve so we can see between let's say 2014 and 2018 that's four years we have stagnation where the strategy didn't do anything and if we take the impulse macd we can see that between 2015 and 2020 so that's five years we also have stagnation period and then if we take the breakout method which is waiting for the flat period and then taking the breakout to the upside remember all the three strategies are only going long so we can see uh, from 2011 till 2017 that's six years we have stagnation so we have four years five years and six years of stagnation between the three strategies and if we take a look at the stagnation we can see that we are between 2015 and 2018 so we have the best stagnation period it's only three years and the drawdown is almost the same yet by combining all of them we get two hundred thousand dollars and that's the takeaway that i want you to take is it doesn't matter what indicator you use a new indicator old indicator they are all going to work on some instruments the most important part is the different profile 
you get from each indicator, even if it's different net profit, different uh, drawdown. But by combining all these into a portfolio, then you get a much better equity curve, more profits while keeping the same drawdown. If we switch to the monthly correlations, you can see that this is the regular MACD. It's uh, one, of course, with itself. And then it's 0 0.07 with the impulse MACD. And then it's zero with the impulse MACD using the flat period and breakout. And then even between the impulse MACD and the impulse MACD flat breakout, you can see the correlation is only 0.14. So this is like trading three different strategies, even though two of them are exactly the same indicator and the other two is basically just a different way of interpreting the indicator. And finally, here is a comparison between the, the equity curves. Look at the smoothness of this portfolio. Well, with this one, you can see it's not as smooth. And then if we go to this, this is nice. And then if we go to this, of course, this didn't make anything until probably 2018. But combining all the strategies in the portfolio is what really make this click. To learn more, make sure to watch this video and I will see you there.